We've heard a lot from the Apologies. We've heard a lot from the um, the Conservative leadership contenders, haven't we, around energy and cost of living? And I understand the leadership contest is your second discussion point for the day. Uh, yes, I should. By the way, can I just tail in the, the the first point about the um, the energy crisis? Because I think we actually also need to reframe it and, and not just see it as a matter of gas and electricity, but as part of a war effort. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's the Ukrainians yeah. who are on the front line. Um, but, uh, we, you know, the, the reality is that British people are part of the backup campaign um, and we are facing a different sort of fight. Uh, and it's almost a bit like the Second World War when people had to have rationing and um, uh, curfews and blackouts. It's almost on par with that. And, and that's really I think we need to see ourselves as part of that war effort. And, and, and yes, it hurts. Uh, and yes, there's a sacrifice. Uh, but this is part of a, a, a bigger picture. And that maybe will give us a little bit of sort of um, comfort to know that it's not just about us. It's about us playing our role in, uh, in helping a, a nation defy, defy, uh, defend itself against the big bully. Uh, but yeah, to move on to the, uh, the leadership contest, I have to say I've I've really been disappointed in the lack of big ideas. We're getting a lot of sort of minutiae, uh, you know, Liz Trust talking about uh, abolishing the Green Levy or Rishi Sunak talking about fines if you miss your NHS appointment. And, and what I really want is a, is a vision. You know, I mean, whether people like them or not, you know, David Cameron, he talked about the big society. It, it failed, of course, uh, but it was, you know, aspiration. Um, uh, Boris Johnson talked about levelling up. Well, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, um, but uh, certainly it was an inspiring idea. And I think we need this sort of bigger picture um, uh, idea, uh, because, you know, particularly what's happening in the country, not just now, but, you know, the last six years, you know, two years of divisive Brexit debate, uh, then another two years of the COVID pandemic and lockdown, now the financial crisis. Um, uh, I think we need something to carry us through, to inspire us, and also to bind us together as a country. So that's what I'm missing, that, that bigger picture, that sense of vision. Mm -hmm. Well, cer certainly when one of them gets the key to number 10, hopefully that first speech uh, outside number 10 will set out some kind of vision that um, as a country we can get behind. But I think, you know, it goes back to your first point there. I think that immediate pressure on cost of living probably is going to be at the forefront of people's minds at the moment. Um, as a bit of a distraction, though, a lot of us kind of watch telly to try and wind down uh, to kind of get away from from real life. And I know there's been a TV show that's kind of caught your imagination, isn't there? The, the TV show Marriage? Uh, yes, this is with um, uh, Nicola Walker and uh, Sean Bean, uh, which divided opinion enormously. Some people said it was the most boring thing they've ever seen. Um, others said it was very refreshing. I think what was great about it was it tackled marriage from a realistic point of view. Um, mm. You know, it wasn't glamorous Hollywood fluff uh, on the one hand, nor was it a sort of a horrible dissection of a marriage that was falling apart and screaming rows, uh, nor, by the way, was it sort of an object of comedy. What it was is very realistic. Uh, sometimes very staid, um, and it really sort of emphasised that marriage is about um, partnership, uh, shared experiencing, um, and, and, and as a rabbi, something I do, of course, is marry people, and I always do a course beforehand for the couple, sort of pre-marriage guidance before it's needed. I never talk about love, because that's far too vague. Um, uh, and what I talk about is much more hard-edged and measurable uh, qualities, uh, such as sort of the four things they almost have to have a checklist for, uh, that they know their partner, uh, that they respect their partner, um, trust their partner, and also like their partner. Mm -hmm. And if you've got those four things, uh, uh, know, respect, trust, like, well, there's no guarantee of success, but it, it means you've sort of um, got a very solid basis. Because at the end of the day, you know, marriage is probably the biggest gamble that any of us ever take in our lives, you know, trying to predict how we feel in 20, 30 years' time. It's quite ridiculous, really, but we do it. Um, and so often, unfortunately, it goes wrong. Um, but uh, I think if you've got those four ingredients, uh, then we've got a sort of uh, a good chance of uh, beating the uh, divorce statistic.